In the dimly lit expanse of his Los Angeles office, Michael J. Fox exudes a blend of kindness and firm resolve as he embarks on a conversation that transcends mere dialogue, delving into the essence of resilience and choice. Leaning forward for a sip of Diet Coke, his words resonate with a profound clarity as he reflects on the power of optimism in the face of adversity. The story is the power of optimism, Fox asserts, his voice carrying a weight of conviction. Acceptance doesn't mean being resigned to something. You look at it and say, what does this truth require of me? His gaze is unwavering, his demeanor a testament to decades spent navigating life's unpredictable terrain, particularly with Parkinson's as an ever-present companion. The narrative of Michael J. Fox unfolds like a mesmerizing tapestry of triumphs and tribulations, each thread woven with unwavering determination and resilience. From the pinnacle of superstardom, gracing the screens of both cinema and television, to the life-altering diagnosis that forever altered the course of his journey, Fox's tale is as poignant as it is inspiring. Despite the tumultuous chapters that have defined his narrative, Fox remains a beacon of hope and optimism, his indomitable spirit undimmed by the passage of time. As he shares insights into his ongoing battle with Parkinson's, his unwavering commitment to advocacy and research shines through, illuminating a path towards progress and discovery. As the conversation unfolds, it becomes evident that Fox's story transcends the confines of individual experience, embodying a universal truth that resonates deeply with audiences worldwide. In his words and actions, he imparts a timeless lesson on the transformative power of resilience and hope urging others to embrace the challenges they face with unwavering determination. In the hushed confines of his office, surrounded by the faint hum of activity, Michael J. Fox emerges not merely as a story, but as a living embodiment of courage, grace, and unwavering optimism. As his journey continues to unfold, his unwavering spirit serves as a guiding light, illuminating a path towards hope, healing, and a future defined by boundless possibilities. I am not the story, says Michael J. Fox, kind and firm, and for the only time in our conversation, unpersuasive. The story is the power of optimism, that it's really a choice. Acceptance doesn't mean being resigned to something. You look at it and say, what does this truth require of me? He leans over for a sip of Diet Coke. It's like with our glorious ex-president, the only answer to that is truth. You can get caught up in the mythology being presented, in the nativism and the hatred, the resentment and the fullness of it all. It'll consume you. So you have to fight this stuff. Hang on, I say. In terms of Donald Trump, isn't truth losing the battle? I don't think that we will go down that path. I think he's in the backstretch and he's gaining speed. What's important is that we keep reminding ourselves who we are. I think will prevail, but the world now is not pretty. Fox is speaking from his office in Los Angeles, assistance mill in the blurred background. He hovers center screen, chestnut hair, graying stubble, still a whisper of pixie to those neat features. Despite his 62 years, more than half of them lived with Parkinson's. Fox's story, and he is the story, is one hell of a tale. Cute Canadian titch quits school moves to Los Angeles, dumpster dives for food, then lands the role of a yuppie teen on the smash sitcom Family Ties. Superstardom is sealed by Back to the Future. By August 1985, he has the U.S. No One film in cinemas and the No Two, Teen Wolf, and the biggest TV show. He is on every magazine cover, every chat show, every bedroom wall. He headlines more movies, The Secret of My Success, the Hard Way, Casualties of War, and marries his family ties love interest, Tracy Pollan. One day in 1989, his little finger begins to twitch. Age 29, he is told he has Parkinson's. Usual life expectancy, 10 to 20 years. Fox hits the bottle. He goes a wall on overseas film sets until Pollan tells him she has no interest in raising children with an alcoholic. He cleans up, sorts another sitcom, Spin City, to fit between breakfast and bath time. And, 
In 1998, goes public with his diagnosis. In 2000, he sets up the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research called PD Cure until Pollen queried. Pedicure? So far, it has distributed the story told in Still, a Michael J. Fox movie, Davis Guggenheim's documentary, which is nominated for a BAFTA, but not, somehow, for an Oscar. It didn't knock me down with grief, says Fox of the Snub. I think there may be something to the fact that it won four Emmys. He's no stranger to small screen, or comedy, snobbery, and anyway, he says. I already have an Oscar. They gave him an honorary one, and I can't say I don't enjoy it. Still was made around the time he received that award, in 2022. It splices archive footage from his work, readings from his, brilliant, memoirs, and an intimate sit-down with Guggenheim. Fox is bruised, literally, from all the falls, but unbowed, upbeat, and witty. Over our video call earlier this week, he is in many ways the same. Mine's still razor sharp. Does he see any parallels between himself and Guggenheim's previous subjects? No, he shoots back. Bill Gates is much taller than I am. Still sweet. I like your prince, he says, leaning in for a little tour of the wall behind me an unlikely yet enthusiastic fan of 1950s British rail posters. But his story has skipped a few chapters since Still was shot. In the film, he has spells of steady focus that are absent today, when his body rocks in almost constant motion. He doesn't discuss his ever-present pain, but racked keeps coming to mind. The emotions he's able to display on his face are more muted, which can make conversation tricky. Likewise, his sometimes mumbled speech. When he does smile, it is profoundly moving. Still explores the gap between 2022 Fox, grasping for calm, and the spookily youthful 80s pinup. Or maybe the overlap. In the clips, he is forever kinetic, careering through doors, zipping on skateboards, gliding over car bonnets. Michael is always moving, 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 says Guggenheim, speaking to me last week. You wonder, is he being graceful like Fred Astaire or is he, like, half-falling? He still wants to race across the room to hand me a Diet Coke, but he shouldn't. Some of the most striking material Guggenheim and his editor assembled comes from early seasons of Spin City when Fox, not yet public with his diagnosis, finds his body betraying him. His left hand twists behind his back. The contortion of a man worried that if people knew he had Parkinson's they would no longer find him funny. It was weird to watch that, Fox confirms. Sick compatter made medical evidence. How about the other footage? People do sometimes ask how I feel seeing myself young and athletic and balletic. Does it upset me? No. Do I change the channel? Yes. It may even have been more successful. Run with the aim of spending every cent every year, the Fox Foundation has bankrolled more research than the U.S. government. We want to cluster bomb all this stuff. Whatever's going, we go in and investigate it, do risky funders. He is excited about deep brain stimulation and optimistic about biomarkers, which pave the way to identifying the disease before symptoms show. By the time his finger began to twitch, 75% of my dopamine-producing cells were dead. But if we get that early, we can treat that prophylactically, and we can eliminate it. I ask about spinal cord implants. Set for wider trial later this year, they bypass the brain in an attempt to correct motor function. Might he consider that? I don't view any of this stuff as an opportunity to explore paths for myself, he says. Plus, an unrelated tumor on the spine, removed in 2018, rules him out. I had a little bit of Parkinson's plus. He smiles, and then he goes a bit cryptic. There is something else on the horizon. He is aware of research in an area which I can't say, specifically, that he is sure will make a real difference. I bet you dollars to donuts. Over what sort of time frame? That's exactly how I don't think, he grins. But, Oak... I'll go with you. I think within the next 10, 15 years, we'll have a viable solution in some form or another, whether it's getting it cured or pathologically avoided. I'm stunned into silence.
Fox, ever friendly, does my job for me. The follow-up question is, will I beat around for that? I doubt it. But it's okay. I don't think in personal terms, you just want to meet the moment. And I think the moment is nigh for big, date answers.